Good morning. Good morning and welcome. It is a joy to be together as God's people on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost and the last day of July. This year is going fast indeed. If you are a visitor with us today, a special welcome. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning with us. And whether you are here in the sanctuary, in our parking lot, or on Zoom, it is good to be together as God's people, united by God's Holy Spirit. A uh, special welcome to Erwin and Crystal. It is good to have them back with us in person. In answer to many prayers. Are there, I know there's some congregational announcements today. Good morning. My name's Bailey Johnson, and I'm part of the stewardship team. For those of you who are last week and attended via Zoom and out in the parking lot, we passed out little index cards. We wanted you to write one or two words on these cards that what makes St. Andrew special to you. We've had many of them turned in. We've had some people that um, have emailed us to the church email address. They're one or two words. So uh, we were hoping that be all turned in by today, of course. But if not, you have until Wednesday at 9 a.m. after that. It's a done deal. So feel free to take another card and fill it out so we can have your input as to why St. Andrew is special to you. Very good. Thank you. Just a quick selfish announcement. And this is so that I don't have to tell everybody individually. <laughs> There are three holes left where we put the fence posts in. We need to drill holes in the new fence posts and then those will be going in within a week or two. So if you're wondering why there's still three holes, we haven't got, we were short three, three posts. So thank you. A new definition for being on holy ground. <laughs> Other announcements? Yep. Good morning. The community garden, if, take a look, it's like incredible. Um, Caitlin and I harvested some snow peas this morning. They're in a bowl in the fellowship hall and there's four kohlrabi, I think in there as well. I think a couple of them might've gotten too big, but do what you will with them. Um, soon there will be green beans. There's quite a few, they're just not quite big enough, but if you're here during the week, stop by, grab some, and we will have plenty of tomatoes as well and cucumbers. There's a few beets growing and some type of squash or melon that we'll find out soon. So help yourself. Very good. Other announcements? Erwin. Good morning. It's good to be back. Uh, wanted to tell you or remind you that St. Andrew's Members of this congregation are eligible to apply for scholarships that has been established in a church uh, on Long Island, but this congregation is, is eligible for them. Any valid educational purpose, whether it's a school tuition, tutors, home study, camp, you name it, uh, that's valid for uh, application. I must warn you, however, that an application to fly to the Bahamas to take a course in underwater basket weaving will not be approved. <laughs> Very good. Anything further? I do want... Apparently they didn't make it this morning. Just a reminder that this coming Saturday, August 6th, is the community picnic and playground dedication from 11 to 3. Hope you can all come out and enjoy yourselves and support it. There are still flyers on the table in the narthex. 
please um, feel free to take some with you and post them around town and wherever you happen to live. I hope to see you all, and fingers crossed for good weather next Saturday. Very good. Thank you. And to add on to that is, um, of course, part of the reason is to, to uh, dedicate the, the playground after all of the work that went into it, uh, to invite people from the community. But one of our real hopes here for St. Andrew is this is an opportunity for us to meet our neighbors. And so if you are able to come for any of that time, just to greet, just to say hello to those who will be here. Um, that would be a, a great part of our outreach and our welcome to the community. So do uh, keep this in your this coming Saturday in your prayers, and if at all possible, bring your uh, presence as well. The other thing I wanted to share is some of you, we ran out, which is always kind of a good thing in mixed ways, uh, but many of you today received in your bulletin uh, prayers, traveler prayers, uh, that is something new that we're, we're doing as well. Uh, across the parking lot very soon will be a prayer post. You may or may not be aware of this, but many people park, make use of our church parking lot as they are traveling, uh, sometimes to check email or, um, or respond to uh, other needs that they have. And we want them to know that they are welcome here and that God is with them as well. And so the... Uh, Sharing Our Faith team has put together a, a program and, and plan for having prayer posts out there just to welcome the stranger and the passer through and uh, invite them to say a prayer for themselves or for other travelers. So we wanted to give you an example of that. And that's, as I said, in some of your bulletins. I think that's all we have. We did have the announcement about next step. Okay. Yep. Hey. Some mess of straps right now. Um, if you, all, I'm okay, thanks. I'm used to it. If you would all um, please say some prayers for my aunt Jane. I got a call from my mom this morning that she's actively dying. Um, she's been sick for a long time, um, but it's still. She's only in her mid fifties, so it's it's sad. And if you would pray for her, I know that she would appreciate your prayers. Prayers for Aunt Jane. Thank you. Very good. Let us take a moment to prepare ourselves for worship.
Will those who are able please rise? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path and have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and love us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join together in prayer. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be
Our first reading is from Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel and Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that had been done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that were done under the sun and see all is vanity and chasing after wind. I hated that all my toil for which I had toiled under the sun seeking that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they will be wise or foolish, yet they will be masters over all that of which I have toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toils of my labor under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. Why do mortals get all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain and their work is vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say responsibly him uh, Psalm 49. Hear this, all you peoples. Give ear, all you who dwell in the world. You of high degree and low, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth my riddle upon the heart. Why should I be afraid in evil days? when the wickedness of those at my heels surround me. The wickedness of those who put their trust in their own prowess and boast of their great riches. One who can never redeem another or give to God the ransom of another's life. The ransom of a life is so great that there would be enough to pay for it in order to live forever and ever and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they had named lands after themselves. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. Time for our children's message. I was still coming up for children's messages at your age, so. I don't think so. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming up today. So it's not in our readings today, but I've been thinking a lot this week about one of my favorite Bible verses which is when Jesus tells his disciples and all of us that we need to be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves, right? And so 
Mark. So what do I have today that I brought up? Bird feeder. Yes. So I love feeding the birds. And Rebecca and I have fed the birds wherever we've lived for a very, very long time, for years and years. So I, we had a first experience a month or so back when I got up in the morning and looked out and not only were the bird feeders, well, one was missing altogether and the rest were down and the bird poles were bent all the way to the ground. You know what had happened? Bear came through. So, you know, at that point, I had a couple options. Now, one was to get really angry at the bear, right? Do you think that was going to do much? Not so much. One, for one thing, the bear, at least I think, wasn't around at that point. But if I got angry in the bear, at the bear and he was around, probably not a good thing, right? Or I could get really discouraged and go, well, that's it. I'm not going to be able to feed the birds anymore. So, and then the birds get disappointed and I get sad. And so that's not a particularly helpful thing either. Right? And so that's why I was, another reason I was thinking about Jesus's call to us to be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Right? But neither of those responses are very helpful. So I started thinking, well, what else can I do? How else can I accomplish what I want to accomplish? Well, that would be, I could kill the bear. You're right. But, you know, that, that might, that'd be pretty tough on the bear. So, <laughs> so what I've ended up doing now is I put the feeders up in the morning and I take them down at night, right? And so the birds get fed and we get to see them. And it's a little more work, okay, but not that much more work. And I accomplish what I want to accomplish, right? And that's true. That idea is true for us as Christians too, right? Sometimes we think we, we really want to do something. We get really committed to doing something. And it may be a really good idea, but things get in our way or problems develop or things don't go as easy as we would like them to. And so pretty soon we're either getting mad at somebody or we're just getting discouraged and saying, that's it. But I think God has promised us that if we keep talking to God about our plans and what we'd like to do, okay, and keep trying and be as wise as we can be, that I bet you either will accomplish what we want or God will provide something even better. That's the promise we have as God's people. All right? Thanks for coming up today. Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are from above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are from above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed in his glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil, desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. Those are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, 
and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another. See that you have stripped off the old self with its practices, and then clothe yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, by barbarian, slytherin, slave, and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those who are able, please rise. Let us together speak the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Our gospel reading for this Sunday is from the 12th chapter of Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. Jesus said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And Jesus told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. He thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and all the things you have prepared. Whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well now, what a depressing set of readings we have before us this morning. All is vanity, our first lesson declares. Everything we do has as much value as chasing after wind. Now granted, we may feel that way on the, on the occasional Monday morning, but is that really the sum total of life? Things seem to get a little better at first when we get to our gospel. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, Jesus explained. Well, that certainly sounds good. Whether it is farming or business or whatever our plans may be for the future, we want our efforts to be productive, right? Jesus' parable continues in what should really be a positive direction. The man recognizes that his accomplishments have overwhelmed his capacity to handle the proceeds. He doesn't just leap into action, however. He first considers what he might do. 
He analyzes the problem, reflects on his options, and then comes up with a plan of action. That's all good sense, isn't it? He isn't just living for the day. He is looking ahead, planning for the future, for his retirement even. Okay, granted, he dies before he ever reaches that future. But even that shouldn't really change the positive nature of this story. There are no guarantees that any of us will live through the week, much less have a long retirement. But that doesn't mean that we should spend all of our savings and run up huge credit bills expecting to die before they come due. Make no mistake about it, the parable of the landowner is a very positive story. It is a marvelous American story of great success. It is Melinda Gates' story, or Stephen King's story. And more than this, it is a story about you and me. We may not have won the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes yet. We may not have become famous and duly compensated authors or entrepreneurs yet. But we wouldn't complain too much if that happened either, would we? You don't need to raise your hands for this. But for many of us, either pre-retirement or currently, how many of us put in 40 hours of work in a typical week? And how many put in 50 or 60 or more? doing all you could to be successful in your responsibilities, whether at home or at work. And when all of that work and effort and planning bears fruit, shouldn't that be a cause for celebration? Our world certainly says it is. And there would be nothing to tell us anything different either, except for verse 20 in our gospel reading today. There God declares his judgment on the rich landowner, and it is not a happy judgment. You fool, says God. You fool. This is a terrible condemnation of the rich man. Now, I get it. When you and I consider calling someone a fool, that sounds like a mild insult, doesn't it? But if you look throughout Scripture, you will rarely find anything harsher than this. To be judged a fool by God is about as low as you can get. And monetary accumulation is not the only issue Jesus is addressing here. Fame or power can become our overwhelming ambition. Awards or degrees can become our addiction even duty or reputation. Anything, anything you and I might use to point to and declare, either to ourselves or to the world, that this, this shows that I am a success, that I have made it, that I am justified and complete in myself without any further needs. Anything like that takes away from what God desires for our lives. 
That is why Jesus declares to those gathered around him, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. God declares that anyone who measures their lives by worldly standards, however praised we may be by others, is no more than a fool. Does this declaration, this teaching of Jesus Christ our Lord, anger you? frustrate you, dismay you, it should. And if it doesn't, you haven't heard it clearly. These words of scripture are harsh. And though it is tempting for me as your pastor to soften them or explain them away in some point to make them comfortable and gentle, well, then they might also cease to be God's words. Jesus concludes his teaching today by saying, so it is with all those who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich toward God. Ah, there we go, we might think. This is one of those treasure in heaven kinds of things, those statutes or descriptions where if I behave myself today, well, then I'll get major rewards when I am no longer on this earth. Except to remember how our gospel reading began today. Two brothers, two members of a family, squabbling over stuff. I'm sure for both of the brothers it was important stuff, maybe even critical stuff. And I suspect if you gave them the opportunity, each brother would explain to you in great detail why their stuff was worth any effort or fight they might make. Two family members squabbling over stuff. As much as Jesus wants your and my lives to be blessed, and so has gone to prepare a home for us, God really does want our lives on earth to be blessed as well. Jesus tells this parable of the two brothers and to God's daughters and sons of every time and place to remind us that the most amazing, desirable, delightful stuff in all the world has no value compared to our relationships with one another not compared to the joy and peace and strength we can gain from having healthy relationships right now, today, on earth. In our efforts on this earth, even if we were to succeed beyond our wildest dreams so that we have to build even bigger garages or rent one of the billions of self-storage units that continue to spring up across our country to find places to put all our stuff, but do so at the expense of broken relationships and anger and division. We are no more than fools 
before our God. Our words from Ecclesiastes sound depressing. And Jesus' teaching feels harsh. Because living in the midst of this world, as you and I do, we are in great danger of our lives being centered on so many other things than love of God and love of neighbor. God's will, God's desire for each of us, his children, is that we should have life and have it abundantly. How easily and how often you and I turn away from that gift, freely given, in our own pursuit of wind. God's will for us, his daughters and sons, is that we should have life and have it abundantly. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Those who are able, please rise. Living together in trust and hope, 
Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy Spirit in prayer. O oh God, you are the wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil from the warfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and those healing uh, of a nation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O God of all nations, you lift before you the, we lift before you the people of Ukraine. We ask your power at work in those whose lives are being torn apart, both those under assault and those being forced into violence beyond their nature. Guide the leaders of all nations that wisdom and compassion may reign. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, and physical distress. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety prevail in your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of the church councils and the committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. We lift before you particular situations or people aloud, silently, or by chat. Surround Aunt Jane with your presence and that of her family. Bring them comfort and strength in this time. Merciful God. O oh God, you are the resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by their examples of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, 
our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. They share a sign of God's peace with one another, horns in our parking lot, and with chat on Zoom. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace of the Lord, everybody. Peace. Peace. Blessings always. Happy to Bobby. Peace, Bonnie. Peace, Eric. Stephen, Bye. 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 those who are able, please rise. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to the labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the goodness of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending proclamation. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is you, comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God in Jesus Christ became fully human so that God himself would understand all of the challenges and fears that beset us humans. Come, eat and drink so that the journey will not be too much.
For those in our parking lot and on Zoom, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Amen. Receive the body of Christ broken for you. Receive the blood of Christ shed for you. Those who are able, please rise. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live with others, both friends and strangers, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life now and always. Amen. Amen.
peace. Love your neighbor.